In our last episode, you joined us as we painted an awesome mural at Moravia Central High in Moravia, New York. But that wasn't all that happened that week. While the mural was going up, there was some pretty fun stuff taking place both in and out of school. When we visit schools, we're usually only there for a week, and so we want to add as much value as we can during that time frame. So while this was happening throughout the week, we filled pockets of time with other fun stuff. Like bus tours! We love welcoming kids to tour the bus. We like reinforcing the idea that it's good to think outside the box and to see the light can be approached from different angles. Our aim is to inspire them and to encourage them to think outside the box too. We were also having a great time visiting with family. In the last episode, you met my cousin Mendel, his wife Bethany, and their beautiful son Fabrizio. Well, during our week in Moravia, we got to spend some good time with them, which was very special. Pretty good. Hi! What are we doing? We're getting ready for movie night. Focus. Are you excited, Fabrizio? Can I tell you something? Yeah. For a baby? Sure. What's that movie? Uh, girls. This was so much fun, and we are so happy that Fabrizio was old enough that he will be able to remember the bus slumber party. We also got some grown-up time with Bethany and Mendel. They showed us around the beautiful area where they live, called the Finger Lakes region. And now, the Finger Lakes area of upstate New York is especially well known for wineries. I'm a fan. Pretty good? It's like happy, happy it's the ice cream. It is super good. All right, we're choosing some wine. What do you think about that one, Cora? This is delicious, and we both like this a lot. Good. We also like the price. Yeah. We got Mandel and Bethany also working on the wine stock. <laughs> and in this day and age, wherever there's a winery, they'll also probably throw a microbrewery in there as well, just for good measure. This is Three Brothers Wineries and Estates, a really beautiful spot. The wine tastes it was pretty good. And we got a lot of a lot of things. <laughs> Well done, sir. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the school, this was going on, and this was going on. I spent a day doing a songwriting workshop with the choir students, and once again, man, did they write a beautiful song. Slow, medium, fast, and then we're going to do the whole thing. You know how that goes. All right. Slow, medium, So, there's like a couple different options. I mean, what do you guys think? 
we can we can talk this one out. We could also have a discussion of going into the other things. That's true. I mean, start off like slower or like chill yeah. and like then like, build up. So yeah, there's there's like the idea that maybe it's not just one or the other. You can mix and match. And that's a really good point. I'm really glad you guys brought up that idea because you're already getting the sense of the importance of dynamics in a song. Now there's something that's happening here that is really sweet. Do you remember the songwriting workshop we did in El Pescadero in, in Baja, Mexico? Remember how we noticed as the workshop progressed, the kids got more visibly comfortable and relaxed until we ended up being a close-knit little group? Well, the same thing happened here. As the workshop went on, you can see the change taking place. We start off very orderly, in a neat semicircle, everyone's notebook in hand. And now you can see that we've done some lyric work. And in true artistic fashion, we've created a bit of a paper mess. Those are all our lyrics and imagery ideas, by the way. And now wait for it. And there it is. That awesome icebreak moment when a group becomes a team. And from here, the circle only got tighter. Until finally, that big formal semicircle was an awesome little team of songwriters singing their song together. We were so young, you and I, dancing in a world that could never be ours. Spent hours and hours trying to make you mine, but you would never, ever give me the time. Still, every time we lock eyes, the stars seem to align and two worlds collide Give me strength to win the fight The world could be so cold but you were mine When you smile you make the stars like shine There's only you It's just us two you won't break me or take me away I'll wait for you No matter what we do I'll wait for you and Every time I walk away Butterflies rush in and make me stay I fall for you the fool and hold you in my arms for one more day. When you smile, you make the stars like shine. There's only you, it's just us two. And finally, we found some pockets of time to visit Bethany's classes. We talked about so many different things. Our story, our experiences traveling around the world. We talked about the experience of becoming bilingual and how that has changed our lives. The kids were so full of questions about the project, about living in the bus, about all the lessons that we have learned from our travels. It was really wonderful to share our experiences with them. For me, this took me right back to high school and my experience in Senora Fox's class. I was always so inspired by the people she brought in to speak with us. It made me so happy that teachers like Bethany carry that torch forward, working so hard to inspire the next generation. 
And so ended our time in Moravia, New York. It was a heck of a jam-packed week full of art and music and family time and the sharing of our home and our experiences in the hope that we plant a seed, spark an idea, light a fire. And that's the best we can hope for in life, that when we take off, we leave behind a little splash of color, a tune or two, and lots of beautiful memories. So now we were headed onwards, but to where? As you have probably gleaned, Bobby was not built for winter weather. I distinctly remember the conversation going, should we cover most of the windows, put the plumbing inside and insulate for freezing temperatures? Nah, we're always going to follow the sun. We'll never take the bus to cold places in the winter. <laughs> well, as you can see, we were not heading south. So what the heck were we doing? Do you remember way back in Baja when we were discussing our strategy for making it to Alaska? From there, we have September. Or let's say I even, think it goes into even September. Middle of September, we can be in Maine. No, I think we'd, we'd have to plan or, at least a month. Or we, or we plan to be in Maine at the peak of the fall, which you say is in October, right? Yeah. And then if we, if we, if we end up deciding to spend the, the winter in Alaska, then it's, it's right, right there, you know, where we can just drive straight to, to Alaska, spend the winter there, hunker down, get a lot of work done, catch up with stuff, and then come back down in the spring. If things get pushed back too far, then um, we see if we can house it somewhere in Maine for the winter. Then that, means, then that means that we have to wait almost a year to, to make it to Alaska. So we put out an open call. At first, it was crickets, and our plan started to deflate. But then, we were contacted by Jill. Now this is amazing. Jill had been following the project for a while, and even though we had never met in person, she offered her home in Cape Cod to us. In her words, I followed you since the rehab of the bus, and always wish you'd come stop by my house. Helping you create beautiful music and art would really make my heart sing. How beautiful is that? To this day, we remain floored by Jill and her husband Ron's trust and generosity. It was the perfect situation. The house is usually winterized all winter, which in and of itself is costly and not so great for Jill's artwork inside. This way, we would stay there, take care of the place through all the winter storms, and in exchange have a perfect place to hunker down and get a lot of work done. Today is the day. We are finally heading to Cape Cod. We have been waiting for this moment for a long time. It's really, really, really uh, kind of overdue. We are super excited. Yesterday, we left Moravia, New York, where we did a mural and a workshop and student presentations. And now we are finally headed off to the Cape. Let's get back on the road. We have like about four and a half hours to get there, maybe five and a half with the bus. With some roads we can go that fast but yeah we're really excited to be there and start cranking up on all that backlog that we have to to work on and you guys are gonna start seeing a lot of videos coming out sometime soon all right let's go so we had to get from albany new york to cape cod massachusetts a drive which is really beautiful this was Bobby's last big drive for quite a while, and the weather just seemed to cooperate to make it a beautiful trip.
After a little bit of rain and some gray skies, the sun came out and the sky turned a bright robin's egg blue. We drove through the countryside with our spirits high and the colors of autumn all around. There is so much to see when you skip the interstates. Sure, the journey takes a little longer, but you experience so much more. We loved all the little towns we drove through, with all the classic New England homes and quaint main streets. We both grew up in small towns, so we get it. We understand the strong ties between families, the roots that grow deep, and that hometown pride. There were times we drove through the most gorgeous natural areas where the fall foliage was still ablaze. In this part of the world, many types of trees lead to a wide spectrum of fall colors. It's magical to drive through on bright fall days like these. Then there was a distinct moment when we could almost feel that we were approaching the ocean. Even before you can see it, there's just a feeling. The back roads changed back to highways and we began seeing road signs for Cape Cod. Cape Cod is a peninsula located in the state of Massachusetts. Many say it looks like a flexing arm. It stretches into the Atlantic Ocean and has a long, deep history in maritime culture. Since 1914, the Cape has been separated from the mainland by the Cape Cod Canal. And so there's only one way you can get a bus onto the Cape, via bridge. Now Jill and Ron's home is on Scraggy Neck, a little peninsula off the Cape. It is connected to the rest of the Cape by this skinny little causeway, which we assume led to the name Scraggy Neck. This would be Bobby's last primetime drone footage for a while. And from there, we just had to make it to the house, lovingly named Scraggy House. We are here! We made it! We made it, it was a little tight with the bus. But we made it. Here we are! So, that's Bobby. Bobby's camping spot for a long while. Yep. Here is Jill and Ron's beautiful home. We haven't gone inside yet, so we're really excited to go inside. Sweet home. home, sweet home. Look! Look how sweet! Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Bobby. Cora San Jose. That's an awesome drawing of Bobby. <laughs> yeah. We were so excited to see the place we were going to call home for the next six months. When you see it, you won't believe how perfect this space was for a pair of artists with lots of work to do. But for that, you'll have to wait until next time on Aren't We There Yet? Hey guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Aren't We There Yet journey. Join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.